right, here we go. Hey, Lab Code agents. It's live. Tristan, Michael, and Dan. Thanks for being here, Dan. I appreciate it. Thanks for helping out. And yeah. today we're going to talk about something that we've heard in passing, and people I don't think understand the significance of and the simplicity of this. But for us as a team and a brokerage, it's really helped our culture, specifically my team. And that's the morning huddle. Even though we do it slightly different than what Michael recommends, I learned it from Michael. So he gave it to us. He's like, Tristan, you're not doing a morning huddle? I'm like, what the heck is that, dude? He's like, oh my gosh, let me show you. So he showed me, broke it down for me. And then from there, we've morphed it into uh, our version of a morning huddle but the important thing is that we're doing it and that Michael showed us how to do it I didn't even know about it before so Michael can you explain to us where you learned this from man and how you apply it to to your coaching company well I, I gotta be honest with you I don't remember where I learned it I hate to say that um, but I, I know I didn't invent it um, if I had to guess well, no, because it's been a long time. It's been like 20 years. So I don't know. I don't know where I learned it originally, but I can say this. Um, it's awesome. It is a game changer. And there's no one right way to do it. You know, people talk about the daily huddle and, and whether it's important or whether it's not important. There is no question it's important. And when we say daily huddle, there's, it's truly got to be daily, right? Monday, Wednesday, yep. Friday is not enough. Tuesday, Thursday is not <coughs> enough. And, and there's a lot of reasons for this. But essentially, the daily huddle for us and for, I think, most people that use it is really a game changer, not just for culture, but in terms of productivity and getting things done, it makes a huge difference. Uh, and you nailed it, Tristan. It's simple, right? So let's, let's start with the simplicity of it, right? Yep. You, do, you don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be all structured and have this perfect, you know, this, that, or that. You know, it, doesn't, it, not, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It just has to happen. Um, and so for us, we do, we, I, you know, I really believe that it should be somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes, um, you know, no longer than 30 minutes. It should be every day. I believe it should be first thing in the morning. Uh, that's really important because um, I want to make sure, like, it's literally the first thing everybody on my team does every day is the daily huddle. Uh, now I say that I've got a couple of sales guys that are really aggressive that they'll come in the office at like six in the morning and start making calls. But for most people, um, you know, it's a, it's a seven thirty huddle that we do. And so for most people, that's the first thing they do every day. Um, but man, it makes sure that everybody's up and out of bed. They're dressed and ready for the day. Cause we do it on video, right? So we can see everybody. Um, and it's a time where we come together and we talk about, you know, what happened yesterday? What's going to, what's going on today? What were your numbers yesterday for the sales team? Uh, we have our admin team on it as well. So we get to look at, um, you know, when the admin team has questions for me, it's better than them interrupting me all day long. And it's better than me interrupting them all day long. Um, same thing. That's with the true. Oh, Dude, that's one of the big things. I mean, and I don't know if you've noticed this on yours, Tristan, but one of the things I've seen on pretty much every team in the, across the country is the amount of inefficiency that's created due to interruptions throughout the day where people are calling each other, asking them stuff that they could have and should have asked on the huddle. Have yeah. you seen that? I have. I think the, the thing that it created for us initially was that exactly what you said. It allowed – for the agents to ask those questions at the beginning of the day so that it, we weren't interrupted throughout the whole day back and forth with texting, voicemail, or anything else that, that could have taken that time off, right? Which then we lose our focus. That's right. And that's the problem because to take your, let's say you're focused on whatever, right? You're working on your computer and it's, let's talk specifically about the administrative team. So they're busy, they're focused, they're working on processing transactions, whatever, and they get a call from one of the agents on the team. Now they got to stop what they're doing. They got to transition over here and go work with the agent, solve that agent's problem. Then they got to come back to what they're doing. That, even if the question is only a couple of minutes, even if they're only on the phone with that agent for a couple of minutes, it's 11 to 22 minutes before they are back on task. It is a huge interruption. It is, and it, let me tell you, it costs the team money. And if it costs the team money, that means it costs the agent money because the team needs to have money to put away for, you know, whether it's marketing or other resources. And every time we're taking people's time away from what they should be doing, it's costing us the ability to go put those other resources in place. That's true. That's yeah. very true. So take me through the morning huddle that you do. I put up a link. If anybody's missing it, let me know in the comments. But 
for those that are watching, what is the process? So everybody calls in at what time for you? What time did you set? Because I know mine's different than yours. We use 7.30 in the morning. Uh, and and that's, that's earlier than most. Uh, most people don't do them that early. Now, we, for our coaching clients, we have a separate team. Uh, so we have our tier one coaching clients. So people that don't have a team yet, people that are z doing zero to 25 transactions a year. So as a coaching company, we provide a daily huddle for them uh, where they can just get on and they can experience the same kind of accountability and motivation, all that stuff, stuff on a daily basis. That huddle happens at seven in the morning. My team's Ooh. huddle, however, yeah, isn't that cool? So that's set Pacific time, right? So okay. if they're on the East Coast, it's 10 o'clock their time. But at oh, least lucky them. Yeah, right. Yeah. I know. And it's funny because I always hear from people, oh, but I'm dropping my kids off at school at that time, or I just, I sleep in or whatever, whatever their excuse is for not being on. And my response is, here's the deal. It's no big deal. If you want to be on our team, you'll be on the huddle at 730 in the morning, right? And if that means you've got to have it on your phone and you're dropping your kids off at school while you're on the huddle, that's totally cool. But you're on the huddle every day no matter what that's something we do as a team uh and and here's the deal if you can't make it to the huddle one day no big deal we'll just assume you're busy we'll shut off your leads because you're probably too busy to handle any new leads at that point so we'll just turn them off and then when we've seen that you're on the huddle for at least another week uh you know each day then we'll know that you're probably ready to take some leads again and we'll start turning your leads back on uh, <laughs> nice dude you want some commitment before that you commit yourselves to them got it got it absolutely okay. Yeah. And so, and the last thing I want to see is I don't want to see somebody that's taking leads that's not doing their part, right? That's not showing up on the huddle. Uh, that's not doing what they need to be doing on a daily basis to really bring it for the team. All right. So the other piece, and, and there's so many pieces to this. I'm getting an echo. Is that on your end or mine? I think I'm, I'm hearing an echo on somebody's. Uh, uh, let me see here. So I don't hear the echo. Let me see if Dan hears it. Dan, you hear the echo, buddy? No. Dan's not seeing it either. Yeah. Okay, no. that's all right. Okay, so here's the deal. So, so at the end of the day, there's a few things that need to happen in the huddle. Number one, the huddle's got to be early in the morning. Number two, it's got to be on video. We use Zoom for it. Uh, it's a really easy platform. There's lots of platforms, but being on video matters for a lot of reasons. Number one, because I get to see and they get to see everybody's dressed and ready for that. Number two, because everybody on the team gets familiar with and used to being on video, which today is a must. If you're not comfortable being on video, you need to question your choice of careers. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to be on video in real estate. Would you agree, Tristan? 100%, man. Yeah. And so this helps our team members get more comfortable being on video because they're with people they know, like, and trust. And they, and this is on a daily basis. So it becomes second nature to them. So it's not a big deal. And now when they go get on video elsewhere, it doesn't seem as scary as it would have otherwise. Um, now, the questions that happen on the huddle are such a big deal, Tristan. This is where if an agent calls me in the middle of the day and they have a question for me, my response is, is there any reason we can't have this discussion on tomorrow's huddle or that this can't wait until tomorrow's huddle? And if they say, Oh, oh no, no, it can't oh, wait. Yeah, dude. oh yeah, dude, this is huge. Like this is, this one right here is a game changer because I got to control my inbound interruptions too. As a team leader, the problem is as you scale a team, the bigger mm -hmm. your team gets conceivably or potentially the more interruptions you get throughout the day, because that's one more person contacting you, even if they only contact you twice a week during the day, but now you got 20 of these people, that's 40 interruptions throughout the week. That's eight interruptions a day. That's a, that's lot. a lot. Yeah. So you've got to get control of that from the beginning. And the way to get control of that from the beginning is to say, look, when you have questions for me, your time to ask those questions is on our daily huddle. And, and I'll tell you, the one I hate the most is, when, you know, you hang up the huddle and immediately somebody's on the phone or, you know, you know, on the phone calling you up. Hey, I know we just got off the huddle, but I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll talk to you on tomorrow's huddle. Like, that's when we handle it. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it makes a difference. Uh, it does make a difference, man. So I remember the very first time that, that you told me about the huddle. And it was when I was in transition, just picking up um, an ops manager. <clears throat> it was a year, years back. And so I brought this guy in and he's like, a huddle? He's like, how is that going to work? I'm like, is this guy even the right guy for my team? He's already doubting me. Um, he's like, you know what? Just talk to, talk to Michael Hellickson and he'll explain to you what it is. So he gets off the phone with you, understands it. Um, 
is sold on it temporarily. And then I end up, we end up parting ways because he sucked. Uh, so I should have known. From the beginning. But the important thing is we put it into play then. And since then, we've had it. And it's made a huge difference in, in that culture. Because now they're listening to me on a daily basis, or they listen to whoever I put into play to, to be in charge of the huddle, right, that morning. We have our huddle. <clears throat> we have our huddle at 8.30 in the morning. So usually kids are already dropped off. People are either coming back from that or they're barely getting their day started or they just finished calling expireds. The point is that 8.30 worked for our team, right? And, when we and that's call, totally fine. Yeah. And what we do is we do, a little, we do it a little bit differently. Um, but remember, we learned it from you, okay? So we just shifted it. We use the morning huddle more to be able to connect and to, for me, to be able to kind of coach the team in the sense of using a topic for the week. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's open houses, listings, or just to let everybody know where we're at, but that's just to bring them together and guys, hey, look, the market's shifting, here's where we're at, or here's what we need to do this week, let's focus on this, right? It's more bringing into what we need to do as agents and motivating them to get their day started well. Um, and then obviously they have their time to come and comment and talk, but ours goes out for about 15 minutes too. So very, very similar in the sense that it's structured, but we just, we just use it a little bit differently in, in that sense. Yeah, and Tristan, there's no one right way to do it, right? The real key and the thing that's most important is that you're getting together with them on a daily basis, that you're laughing together, that you're talking together, you're holding each other accountable, you're, you're educating, you're motivating, you know, all, all these things can happen in a 20 to 30 minute call. It doesn't have to last a long time. Very true. But they've got to see you. They've got to connect with you. And this is, this is where it's magical or one of the big places it's magical is because especially guys like you and me, Tristan, we're on the road a lot, right? We travel all the time for, for work and, and, and it's, it's challenging to maintain relationships with people when you're not in the office with them all the time. Well, how do you really in that relationship? Getting voice to voice is okay, but getting face to face is the next best thing to being able to, being able to actually be in person with one another. Um, and it really does. It changes the relationship. We do our, a lot, not all of our coaching clients choose to do this, but a lot of our coaches and coaching clients now are doing our coaching calls on video for the same reason, because it really deepens that relationship. Uh, and there's really, there's really three things. You know, if I think about teams and I think about what are the three activities and actually there's more than that. Let me, here's, here's some activities teams need to do together. If you really want to build a strong team that okay. has an awesome culture and that has staying power. All right. One is the daily huddle. Okay. Two is, is weekly team meeting, and that's W-E-E-K, not W-E-A-K, just saying. <laughs> I know there's a few of those out there. Uh, the next is call nights, right? A regular call night where all of your agents come into the room together. They, they prospect together. They, you know, I like Thursday nights, and I like coupling the call night with the team meeting. Uh, and the reason I like coupling the call night with the team meeting is because by doing so, um, I'll, I re, I achieve efficiencies, right? So I actually, there's three things I'll do on that night. I'll do the team meeting, I'll do the call night and I'll do my recruiting or career night. Um, but I, I do it in a way that makes it possible for all the agents to participate in each one of those. Um, and it limits the amount of times they have to come all the way to the office. Right. Uh, so those are important. Then you've got your team activity, right? So you're, you're going to do like a team outing or whatever once a quarter, and then you've got your client events once a quarter. If you're doing those five things as a team on a regular basis, dude, that is a, that team looks completely differently than a team that doesn't do those things. That's a very good point, dude. I think the, the, the thing that stands out for me on that part is the things that you're doing together, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's like a family. The more things you do together, the, the closer knit you are as a family. That's, That's right. a very good point, man. Very good yeah. point. So. Some of the things that, that we've learned on the morning huddle for us is, is that one is, as me, as a team leader, is that it's helped our culture. So people are closer together because they're, they're listening more to each other because we comment, we interact, right? Then they, they then, in essence, because I'm the one doing the morning call for the most part, 
they still feel a connection to me, right? Even though I, sometimes I don't see them for like two weeks at a time, right? It's just a phone call or then we do the huddle and then we meet in person for the calls that you say we do do that as well. We do the events, but this allows me to stay present in some way. And I still haven't done the Zoom meeting morning huddle, which that would be interesting. Um, it makes such a difference. It really does. It keeps, I, I think it would keep people, that's like leveling up, dude. I think it would keep people even more accountable. It does. You have to show up with your game face at that point. You can't be like, uh, mute. Well, and Tristan, we take it a step further, what we do. So in our office, the people that are here local, they come into my office right here in this room that I'm in now. Uh, they come into my office and they're all standing around and and then we've got our people that are remote on Zoom and so they can each see each other uh, in the new office. We're building a new office right now and in our new office we have uh, our big, big conference room that's got, uh, you know, we've got big TVs up and each of these TVs is, you know, capable of wirelessly streaming and all that stuff. And so literally we'll be able to get everybody there looking at the TV, seeing everybody else and it just, it really, it, it it really does change the dynamic. And, and it's funny because I get pushback on this from a lot of agents for a lot of different reasons, but here's the reality. It works. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I don't understand why, you know, for example, Novocaine works. I don't know why it does. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I'm not a chemist, right? I don't understand why it works, but it freaking works. Right. Right. And, or, or Tylenol, like I don't understand what Tylenol does or why it works, but it works. So quit trying to dissect, and, and I say this to people because so many people want to dissect all this stuff and they want to change it. And well, why can't I just open up the Tylenol capsule and just take half of the little BBs in there, right? Why, why do we have <laughs> Well, I don't know, but because the doctor said, do it this way. Well, guess what? The doctor is saying, do a freaking team huddle. It works. And when you've got people like Tristan and myself, you know what I mean? Dude, we sold a lot of real estate. We've made millions and millions and millions of dollars selling real estate. Don't reinvent this one. Just do it and, and trust the system. Yeah, you know what? I, I wish I would have done this way earlier because I always had a challenge keeping the team, the team's culture in place. And I can't believe it was something so small. And that's why I called it small. It's small, but it's yeah. super powerful, dude. And, and I don't think Yeah, it's kind of like, okay, you're 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 a Christian guy, Tristan. I'll show, this is, here you go. This is a good one, right? Yeah. It's like when Christ tells the leper to bathe in the River Jordan. Why uh, did the leper not want to, because it's too easy, that can't possibly work, or because the river's too muddy, or there's all these, they, they, they start to screw themselves mentally out of doing this because it's either too easy, they don't understand it, it's something that, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is, you got to stop letting that be a roadblock and just say to yourself, God, you know what, these two guys are doing it on their teams, and how about that, here's, we were talking just before we got on about uh, Dwayne Legate, uh, uh, Dwayne Legate, uh, the owner of, uh, or the Zinc. former owner of Commission yeah. Zinc who sold it for $250 million. This guy, did a, he did a deal. He called it the 909, all right? So his entire company would get oh. together in their big uh, common area where the cubicles were, and they would all stand up. And that's another thing we do. Everybody, nobody gets to sit during our daily huddles. They, everybody stands. Um, uh, and there's lots of reasons for that. One, because I, want, I don't want to take too long, but there's other reasons too, but uh, the energy level, all that. But anyway, so everybody would stand around. They would do their 909. So between 909 and 930 is when they had their daily huddle. And the guy built the $250 million company. And, and I should say he sold it for $250 million to Fidelity. Uh, I'd say if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for us. Dude, I like the name of it, 909. Yeah, isn't that cool? I'm going to change mine to the 830, 830. They, gonna, they, had, they actually had signs up on the wall that said, I don't, and they did, they would do that. Like they'd have signs up on the wall that said the 909 and dude. Like, this thing, you know, it was kind of cool. It was fun. 830. 830 with Tristan Ahumada. Dude, I'm going to make hats. I'm going to make the, the number eight, the word three and the number zero. Eight. Dude, that's actually cool. You got to turn the word three sideways, though. Oh, dude. That, that would be sick. That's cool. Dude. Thanks, bro. I love I it. I want one of those hats. You got to send me one of those hats, dude. I, yeah, that's I actually it. really cool. I love that's that. A powerful idea, man. So I think that, in essence, the morning huddle, if you didn't see how it's run, we both use – oh, here, actually, dude, I use Uber Conference. Everybody and and there's some things I like about Uber Conferences, but it's not, it's not video right? It's, yeah. it's audio. So for me, like, I get what you're saying. And I actually agree with you. 
And I think for me, it's like maybe like a, a, a small fear factor. Like what if I change it to Zoom? You know, not everybody's going to show up. So it's me and my limiting belief. So just leave me alone with my leave, limiting belief, okay? Just leave me Dude, alone. Dude, I got to tell you, Tristan, you're not alone, man. If I had a nickel for every team leader, you know why most team leaders don't want to do it? Because the team leader doesn't want to have to be game on at 7.30. Oh, that's so true. I hate you for saying that. I'm telling you. Dude, it's true though, right? And that's like Noelle Nielsen's on. Hi, Noelle. How are you, by the way? Uh, and she's saying, what time in the mornings are you doing it? Tristan does his at 8.30. I do mine at 7.30. Uh, and then we do the one for Club of Coaching at 7 a.m. And this is all Pacific times. Um, but there's no question, Tristan, that is a huge hangup for a lot of team leaders. And guys, if you want to build a world-class team, you got to lead by example. You got to start by fixing you. You got to become, and, and here's the thing, you don't have to be world-class initially to build a world-class team, but you got to freaking get into action in order to become world-class exactly. and in order for your team to be world-class. What do they say? You don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great. That's true. Well, in this case, that's the thing, dude. So look, I'm, I'm slow, okay? So right now I'm doing it with Uber Conference. And for Which is better than nothing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a phone. It's a phone, a phone number with no code because I pay for the extra. So people just dial in and they just go right into the call and they just wait until 8.30 if they get in earlier. Now I use... I use Haymarket every morning so that a message goes out every morning to my agents so that they know, hey, expect the call or jump on the call at 829 so that you're ready. Because I found that if I just left it to them to call, they wouldn't call, right? They just wouldn't. So, now, Uber Conference also dials them automatically. Right. right? Uh, that's right. That was kind of cool for a little bit until they got tired of that. So. <laughs> So, okay, so Tristan, what I just heard you say a moment ago, though, is that you're feeling like it would make a big difference to start doing this on video. Is that right? Uh, you know what? Did you, did you hear that in my voice, damn it? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, and the, the reason I'm asking this, you know where I'm going with this, and Noelle, well, you're witness to this. I know Noelle's on, and I know she'll hold you accountable. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> so what I want to know is, when will you start doing your team huddles on Zoom so that you're all on video? You're cutting out. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Fine. First of my kids. I'm going to probably do it by May 1st. May 1st. Okay, so I guess the real question I got to ask is, why are we waiting until May 1st? Why aren't we starting Monday? Because I have to get comfortable with it first. <laughs> Killing me, Tristan. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's me. Dude. It's me. Okay. It's me. It's not them. <laughs> Dude, you're like that girl in high school, right? It's not no. you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> but and look at this. Look, look, uh, jo Josh uh, Dolchik says, silently awaits someone somewhere showing a video of an agent generating leads. And you know what, Josh, that's a great example, right? Like one of the things we do too uh, and we've done this. We've had some, uh, we've had different battles going on with, uh, we had our March Madness thing going on here recently where we had teams in different communities um, that, you know, different, different cities across the country and they would prospect live on Zoom together. Whoa. Uh, and That's so, cool. dude, it's super cool, super cool. Uh, and what happens is even if you're, you could do this with other teams or even if it's just internal to your team, if you've got expansion teams or whatever all over the place, um, but when they're prospecting together, and they're, it's not as good as being in the same room prospecting together, which is the best, right? Uh, oh, yeah. But it's the next best thing. Um, and if you're going to do that, it's really fun to couple that with, you know, competing against other teams in other parts of the country. Um, That's a great idea, man. So it, it really does work. I see Austin's on there replying to Noel. Austin's my son, by the way, for the, those of you that don't know him. And there's a kid, Austin, since you're on and clearly not making your phone calls right now, uh, which you should. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, helping you out. Yeah, he's not what do we call it now. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll, we'll call it that. I'm just giving him a hard time. Uh, but this is a kid that very consistently, since he was 14 years old, this is a kid that when he's, he's a wicked hardcore prospector, right? He's always on our daily huddles. And yesterday, so what he does is he sets strategy sessions, which is about the same difficulty level as setting up a listing appointment. Okay. Yesterday, Austin is now 17 years old. He's worked with us since he was 14 in the, in the capacity of a salesperson. Yesterday, he scheduled 
eight strategy sessions, which is like scheduling eight listing appointments in a single day. The record in our office is 10, uh, but to get eight Whoa. in one day is pretty amazing. So Dude. Just kudos to Austin. Proud That's of him huge. for that. Yeah, but here's what we found. You know, we, we, what we found is when people, and, and here's another thing, we report our numbers on the daily huddle. So when you come on to our daily huddle, if you didn't have, if you didn't set any appointments yesterday, guess what you have to do? You have to hold up your hand like this in the shape of a donut. And you have to say, I set zero appointments yesterday. And it's like a mark of shame, right? But it, so it matters. Can you take me through your morning huddle? You call, uh, everybody calls in on Zoom, right? Yep. And they all, what, what are they expected to do? Do they report certain numbers or what do they do? Tell me. The very first thing we do is we go through the numbers. Everybody reports their numbers. You know, how many calls, contacts, appointments, how many cold calls did you make versus how many warm lead calls did you make? Uh, and I'll tell you right now, if everybody on my team doesn't make at least an hour of cold calls per day, and I'm talking about my, our coaching team, not the real estate team. Uh, but uh, so you got to remember our coaching team's already at this level up here where the real estate team is not quite there yet, right? Um, it's, but it's, you have to gauge where your team's at. It's really important because eagles don't flock with turkeys, right? So in the beginning, when you first build a team, you have a, a team full of turkeys a lot of times. So it takes time to kind of upgrade and top grade to get where you've got a team full of eagles. Once you've got a team full of eagles, I would say something like, you know, for example, like if you don't prospect cold, you know, if you're not doing cold leads for an hour a day, you don't get my warm leads. I better, I better see traction on your hour a day of cold calls before I'm going to start giving you leads I'm paying a lot of money for. And you've got to do really well with my PPC leads and Facebook leads before I'm going to give you the freaking Wailopo, you know, high-end leads or the Realtor.com or the Zillow leads, right? And so they report all their numbers. After they've reported their numbers, uh, now we know are they going to be on the round robin today or not, right? If you're not on the huddle, you're not on the round robin. If you didn't hit certain targets, you're not on the round robin. Um, you know, again, to be on the round robin is a big deal because that's where the warm leads, the goods, you know, the, the Glen Gary leads come in. After all that's done, then we go into uh, Q&A. So people get to ask me questions. They get to ask each other questions. That's where we solve all the things. That, and so people show up to the huddle. If, when you come to my huddle, you are expected to have a pad and paper, or a, a pen and paper with you. Um, you're, you know, because you're going to need to take notes. And we, everybody's not allowed to bring their phone uh, with them to the meeting. So everybody stand here. No phone, just pad and paper so they can take notes. Uh, and then they're expected to have their list of questions for other people on the team. Once all of that is done, then we do, we, you know, if we have time permitting, we'll do kudos where people will say nice things about somebody on the team. Hey, so-and-so did a really great job. Or, hey, Megan really learned this system really well. Thank you for learning that and teaching me or whatever. Um, and then it, sometimes we'll do a little joking around, you know, like uh, I might do some, you know, really good cowboy jokes or you never know. <laughs> That's funny. I got, I got to be on some of your calls, man. Uh, so for those of you that are just joining us, go to uh, clubwealth.com forward slash huddle. You can then download the, the PDF. Is it a PDF or is that just uh, a There's a free PDF in there. Yep. Yep. You go to clubwealth.com forward slash huddle. You can get the free PDF. There's another video of me walking through step by step the entire huddle. Um, but and somebody uh, has a question here. Amrita Kurana says, how do you overcome prospecting with others? I find it hard to hear the person on the phone with others in the background. So I love this question, and uh, is, uh, I'm going to guess it's Am 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 Amrita. And yeah. so, Amrita, what I would suggest is, number one, you need a headset with uh, dual ear, you know, over-ear headset with, uh, that goes over both ears, uh, and a boom microphone makes a big difference. And you can adjust your sensitivity of your microphone uh, as long as it's a boom microphone. And by adjusting that sensitivity down, they won't hear the other people. And if you've got the over-the-ear, you won't hear the other people as much. And even if you can hear them a little bit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a key phrase, and I want everybody to hear this phrase, and I'm Rita, you know, this is not meant to offend or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure you're a fantastic agent. I'm sharing this phrase because it's what I would tell my team. You ready? Write this down. Suck it up, buttercup. So <laughs> is that bad? Is that horrible? That's perfect. So, but the reason I say that is because, I mean, the reality is you're not going to get rid of all the noise. Yeah, and, it, and it is hard. And, and so when an agent comes to me and says, well, I don't want to do this because I got all this background noise, I'm going to walk them through that exercise. Let's make sure they've got the dual headset. Let's make sure they've got the microphone dialed down. We'll do everything we can to make the environment as conducive to, to, to productive prospecting as possible. But at the end of the day, it's never going to be perfect. Do it anyway. 
All right. Makes sense, man. I like that. So one thing that I'm noticing from the conversation that we're having right now is that what you expect from the people that are on the morning huddle is a lot more than I'm expecting right now. Mm. And so that's just cool to see because I'm like, oh, wow, I need to, I need to level this part up. Right. So I'm always paying attention to that and looking where I, where I'm not as good. So that's really see, good. Can I speak to that really quick? Yeah. Because what you just said, you guys, here's the thing. I will tell you this. And I, you know, we coach the biggest teams in the country, all across, in, in the U.S. and Canada, like biggest teams in the world, right? And I'm telling you, I see this all the time. There is a direct correlation between productivity on a team and the expectation level uh, on the team. So, for example, we had, a, we had an agent in, in the Seattle, Washington area, brand new agent, right? Brand, brand new to the industry, started coaching with us in his, in his sixth month selling real estate. And that year, we got him to over a million dollars in net income in that first year. How did we, and so in his first 12 months coaching with us, how did we do that? This guy had massive expectations for his team. And if you didn't meet those expectations, you weren't on the team. So it was like, it was like a big deal to be on that team. Then you've got other teams where they have absolutely no expectations. Oh, we'll take anybody. And if you, you know, a prospect, that's great. And if you don't, that's great. And guess what? Those teams struggle, struggle, struggle to be profitable. And so do their agents. If you want to make a bunch of money and you want your agents to make a bunch of money, you have to raise the bar. And it's, and it's hard to do because it means firing people that we like occasionally. It means sometimes we've got to set them free to go be unproductive somewhere else. And that's hard to do. Yeah. And I think it all starts with the morning huddle, man, believe it or not. It's that simple. It's yeah. like if somebody can't commit to you every morning for a few minutes, then they're not going to commit to anything else on the team. Dude, you just nailed it. If they can't make that one little commitment, what makes you think they're going to commit to calling more than 10 people a day? How, how many should they be calling? Are they going to call 20? Are they going to call 30, 50? I mean, th there's got to be an expectation. And regardless of what your expectation is, there needs to be an expectation. And then write this down. You have to inspect what you expect. And that's a big part of the daily huddle. It's allowing you on a daily basis to inspect what you expect and on a daily basis to hold them accountable. And if that doesn't exist in the absence of that, you will never produce at the level that you were destined to produce. Yeah. You will only get out of it what you put into it. Agreed, man. Agreed. Oh. All right. Anything else you want to add here in, in closing? I know it's a, it's a short topic, but it's such an important topic. And for those of you who headed in late, we're going to edit this, post it on YouTube and then blast it out again. So if you missed the beginning for a little bit, at least it'll be on lab codes, but anything you want to add, Michael here, let me rock through a couple of the, some of the goals for the huddle, right? One, we're going to reduce unnecessary calls, emails, and interruptions throughout the day. All Number right. two, we're going to ensure each team member is up and actively starting their day in a positive way. Three, we're going to create the opportunity to troubleshoot clients and escrows that are stuck Four. We're going to efficiently, efficiently work through all open escrows with our, our TC and our lender. Lenders expected to be on the call as well. Four, uh, I don't know, what are we on? Five. We're going to motivate and inspire everybody on the team, including our lenders. Um, and this happens a lot by hearing the production of other agents uh, on the call. We're going to hone our skills, right? So we do training on a daily basis on these calls as well. Um, and including, but not limited to, role playing. Um, you know, so anytime somebody tells me, Hey, Michael, what do I do in this situation? I immediately go to role play. I immediately go to role play. And then I walk them through why I did it the way I did it. Um, we're going to create synergy, strong team culture. We're going to deepen the bonds within the team. Uh, and we're going to make sure there's some people that need to attend our team leaders, obviously got to be on there. listing agents, buyer agents, lenders, transaction coordinator, listing coordinator, the entire administrative staff. Anybody who's truly on our team and is, and is involved in our transactions on a daily basis needs to be on that huddle. Okay. I love that, dude. Well, so I have a question. Uh, actually, yeah. Scott Edwards, which is my lender, said he loves that. <laughs> I love that, too. Dude, uh, well, he, can I share something with before you ask that question? Don't, don't lose your question. Scott, let me tell you, I'm glad you're watching this and listening. Scott, here's the deal. You want to talk about Scott being able to get more business out of your team? This is how he does it. Be at all the team huddles, be at all the team meetings, and be at all the call nights. And, and it does, you don't have to always buy something or bring something or anything. Like, don't, don't feel like you got to do that. Just being there and supporting the team and, and being available to the team and showing how serious you are about the team, 
dude, they're going to want to use you. And even if some of those agents have another lender that they've been using for a while, if you're the guy that's constantly there day in and day out, day in and day out, eventually I used to race jet skis, right? I was, I was the fat guy on the course, right? So I always started last and I, and I ended up winning. I was number one in Canada and number three in the world. How did I get there? Because the guy in front of you always makes a mistake eventually. And all you got to do is be ready to slide in when he does. And ev eventually you get behind number one. Number one's going to screw up eventually. Just wait till he screws up. Just be very methodical. And boom, all of a sudden you can pass him and you're in the front. Same thing with a lender being on that daily huddle. Dude, be there every time. If I was a lender, there's, I would look for every agent I could find, every team I could find that would allow me to be on their huddles and bring value. Anyway, Tristan, you had a question. Um. Oh, okay. My question. Yeah, that was actually really good. Since he's my lender, I was listening. I was like, oh yeah, that's very true. <clears throat> Here's my question. So I, I, after you and I have been talking here, uh, first of all, I always feel like it's a coaching session for me, but you know, that's besides the point. Um, I, I, I know what I'm not doing right now that I could level up in the morning huddle. What are you not doing right now that you could level up in your morning huddle? Uh, that's a great question. I would say, what can I, what can I level up in, in my morning house right now? Probably I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, probably the kudos. I need to do a better job of making sure that, that we're doing kudos every day on our daily huddles and, and that we're and that we're fostering that environment. We, there was a time when we were really good at this years ago when we had the real estate company and we we're focused on that. We did really, really well with that piece of it. And I just, we, I haven't been as good at that lately. And, and, and it starts with me. So I need to find reasons to say nice things about individual members of the team, not the team as a whole, individual members of the team. Uh, what about so, starting with kudos instead? So it gets done. That's not a bad idea. That's super fast. You know, one minute in, Boop just wanted to thank before we start, I wanted to thank Austin for being yeah. super bad awesome instead of bad, you know, bad awesome. <laughs> oh, he knows. He's, he, you don't have to worry about that kid's self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that. That's very true. <laughs> anyway, dude, He's a rock star. But you know, that's a great idea. And that's, that's actually probably something we ought to do. I'm going to give that a try tomorrow. We'll start. Uh, and, and so you'll notice I'm not waiting until May 1st. I'm just going to go ahead Shut and up, I'm just saying. Dude, <laughs> I have to build up for it, okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, man. I'll make you deal. I'll start doing kudos first thing on the call starting tomorrow. If you'll start doing your Zoom calls tomorrow. Come on. How about on. Friday? Give me till Friday. Okay, Friday. Friday. You want to do, you, will you commit to Friday. Friday? I'll do it Friday. Okay, so then you need to come back to this post and you need to comment in here and say, you know, I commit to doing it Friday, starting Friday on Zoom, and we, and then did you actually do it or not? And I'm going to start tomorrow with the kudos first thing. That's going to happen tomorrow. I love it. All right, dude. Thanks, All man. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. And, Michael, uh, where do we go to if we want to learn more about your coaching? Just go to Club Wealth. You know, there's tons of free, great uh, blog posts on there. A lot of really deep content. Like when we do a blog post on how to get 150 people to your next open house, there's a full video and free checklist. Just follow it. It's all free. It's all on the website. Uh, just go there. Just go to clubwealth.com and, um, and reach out to us there. So. Thanks so much, man. Thanks again, Thanks for Michael. having me on, Tristan. I'll see you next week at Listing Agent Bootcamp. That's right, man. Listing Agent Dude. Bootcamp in San Antonio. I'll be there. I I had better see you in a freaking cowboy hat, bro. Come on. I'm going to buy one before I get up there. Honestly. Dude, I want you channeling your inner cowboy. Come on, man. This sure. thing is going to be so much fun. You just wait. When you see what we got going on here, you're going to be like, there's no way they did that. You're like, Helixson has truly lost it this time. Bro. Like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Right on. See you then. Bye.